ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸਾਥ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਸੈਗਮੈਂਟ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਹਾਰਟ ਦਾ ਕੇਅਰ ਰਿਵਾਈ ਕੇਅਰਿੰਗ ਫॉर ਯਰ ਹਾਰਟ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਨੇ ਹਰਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਕੌਰ ਜੀ ਫਰਮ ਨਿਊ ਕਾਸਲ ਔਰ ਦ ਹਸਪਤਾਲ ਇਚ ਕਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੈ ਐਂਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਕਿਰਨ ਪਟੇਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਕਿਰਨ ਪਟੇਲ ਇਹ ਤੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਹੋਪ ਹਸਪਤਾਲ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਕੰਸਲਟੈਂਟ ਕਾਰਡੀਓਲੋਜਿਸਟ ਨੇ ਨਾਲੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਕਿਨ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਮੈਡੀਕਲ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟਰ ਨੇ ਐਨਐਚਐਸ ਇੰਗਲੈਂਡ ਦੇ ਔਰ ਚੀਫ ਟਰਸਟੀ ਫਾਰ ਸਾਊਥ ਏਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਹੈਲਥ ਫਾਊਂਡੇਸ਼ਨ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਗਟ ਇਟ ਐਕਿਊਰੇਟ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਰਿਮਾਈਂਡ ਕਰਾ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਹਾਰਟ ਕੰਡੀਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਬਾਬਤ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਸੈਗਮੈਂਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਫਰਕ-ਫਰਕ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੇ ਹਾਰਟ ਕੰਡੀਸ਼ਨ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਸੀ ਪਰ ਹੁਣ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੰਟੀਨਿਊ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਹਾਰਟ ਡਿਜ਼ੀਜ਼ ਦੀ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਆਪਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਹਾਰਟ ਅਟੈਕ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਜਾਂ ਐਂਜਾਈਨਾ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਜਾਂ ਉਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਅੱਗੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਹਾਰਟ ਦਾ ਚੈਂਬਰ ਦਿਖਾਇਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਫਿਰ ਦਿਖਾ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਆ ਇਹਦੇ ਚਾਰ ਚੈਂਬਰ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਇੱਕ ਸੱਜੇ ਹੱਥ ਦੋ ਸੱਜੇ ਹੱਥ ਦੋ ਖੱਬੇ ਹੱਥ ਔਰ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਉੱਪਰ ਬਲੱਡ ਆਂਦਾ ਐਟ੍ਰੀਅਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਫਿਰ ਵੈਂਟ੍ਰੀਕਲ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਸਾਈਮਲਟੇਨੀਅਸਲੀ ਪੰਪ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਇਹ ਆਲਸੋ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰਿਸਿਟੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਵਾਇਰਿੰਗ ਹੋਈ ਦੀ ਆ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰਲੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਮੈਡੀਕਲ ਟਰਮਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਐਸ ਨੋਡ ਏ ਵੀ ਨੋਡ ਐਂਡ ਫਾਈਬਰਸ ਥਰੂ ਦਾ ਮਾਇਓਕਾਰਡੀਅਲ ਸੈਪਟਮ ਐਂਡ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਮਾਇਓਕਾਰਡੀਅਮ ਇਟਸੈਲਫ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਗੱਲ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆ ਟੂ ਨੋਟ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਬਲੱਡ ਬਾਕੀ ਦੇ ਜਿਸਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੰਨੀਆਂ ਵੱਡੀਆਂ ਵੱਡੀਆਂ ਬਲੱਡ ਵੈਸਲਸ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਹਦੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਲਈ ਆਪਣੀ ਨਰਿਸ਼ਮੈਂਟ ਲਈ ਇਹਦੀਆਂ ਬਲੱਡ ਵੈਸਲਸ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਛੋਟੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਦੇਖੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਛੋਟੀਆਂ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਮੈਂ ਪੈਨਸਲ ਦਾ ਨਿਸ਼ਾਨ ਦਿਖਾ ਰਹੀ ਹਾਂ ਔਰ ਇਹ ਬਾਹਰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖੋ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਬਲੱਡ ਵੈਸਲਸ ਨੇ ਛੋਟੀਆਂ ਹੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਅਗਾਂ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਬਰੀਕ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਇਹ ਬੜੀ ਛੇਤੀ ਦੇ ਕੇ ਬਲੌਕ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਇੰਨਾ ਕੁ ਪਿਛਲਾ ਦੇਖ ਕੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਹੁਣ ਅਸੀਂ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੂੰ ਪੁੱਛਾਂਗੇ ਕਿ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਸ਼ਨ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੀ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਸੋ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਵੀ ਟੌਕ ਡੇਅਰ ਔਨ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਕੇਅਰ ਆਫ ਅ ਪਰਸਨ ਹੂਸ ਵਰੀਡ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਕੋਰੋਨਰੀ ਔਰ ਦ ਐਂਜਾਈਨਾ ਔਰ ਦ ਐਕਿਊਟ ਦਿਸ ਇਨ ਪ੍ਰਾਇਮਰੀ ਕੇਅਰ ਸੋ ਵਾਂਸ ਵੀ ਰਿਫਰ ਦ ਪੇਸ਼ੈਂਟ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਐਕਿਊਟ ਇਜ਼ ਫਾਈਨ 999 ਦੈਟਸ ਬੀਨ ਪਬਲਿਸਾਈਡ ਬਾਈ ਵਾਈਡਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਪੇਸ਼ੈਂਟਸ ਮਸਟ ਨਾਟ ਵੇਟ but for uh, other conditions which are doubtful or patients not sure and we do thorough investigations in primary care so we refer the patient to you yeah mm. so what uh, tell us briefly what investigations would you be doing in secondary care oh, thank you and it's a pleasure to be here you are most welcome yes mm. so we see many patients in secondary care mm. who are referred with a possible diagnosis of angina Jeez. the first thing that we will do in the clinic setting is to discuss that with the patient so take a history examine the patient and try to come up with a diagnosis again to see what our chances of angina in terms of suspicion is so there are some patients who will have a very classical history of angina so they're getting chest pain on exertion which is alleviated by rest mm -hmm. and for those patients our suspicion is so high that the next test is often to go directly to the gold standard test which is a coronary angiogram Wonderful. now the coronary mm. angiogram mm. is where we will put a tube into the arteries and the most common routes are either through the femoral artery in the groin mm -hmm. or through the radial artery mm -hmm. in the wrist mm. and into those arteries we will put a little tube called a sheath mm. and through that sheath we will then under x-ray guidance put catheters into the arteries of the heart and once the catheter is in the heart under x-ray guidance we will squirt a bit of dye down which is radio opaque so on the x-ray we can see what the arteries are looking like mm -hmm. now by doing that test it takes about 20 to 30 minutes we'll be able to see if there are any significant narrowings in the arteries of the heart and importantly whereabouts those narrowings are mm -hmm. so
ਔਰ ਜਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਇਥੋਂ ਰੇਡੀਅਲ ਆਰਟਰੀ ਤੋਂ ਤੇ ਜਾਂ ਲੱਤ ਤੋਂ ਤੋਂ ਫੈਮਰਲ ਆਰਟਰੀ ਤੋਂ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕਿ ਐਕਸਰੇ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਉਹ ਗਾਈਡ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਸਿੱਧੀ ਹਾਰਟ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਕੋਰੋਨਰੀ ਆਰਟਰੀਸ ਤੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਪਹੁੰਚਦੀ ਹੈ ਥੋੜੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਡਾਈ ਇੰਜੈਕਟ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਦਿਖ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਆਰਟਰੀ ਸਾਫ਼ ਸੁਥਰੀ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਲੋਕੇਜ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਅਕੋਰਡਿੰਗਲੀ ਫਿਰ ਟ੍ਰੀਟਮੈਂਟ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਅੱਗੇ ਦੱਸੋ ਹੋਰ ਕੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੋ ਇਫ ਸਪੋਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਨਾਟ ਸ਼ੋਰ ਕਿ ਇਟਸ ਨਾਟ ਸਟ੍ਰੇਟ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਥੈਨ ਵਾਟ ਵੁਡ ਯੂ ਡੂ ਯੈਸ ਸੋ देयर ਆਰ ਮੈਨੀ ਪੇਸ਼ੈਂਟਸ ਹੂ ਡੋਨਟ ਹੈਵ ਦ ਕਲਾਸਿਕਲ ਫੀਚਰਸ ਆਫ ਐਂਜਾਈਨਾ ਜੀ ਫੋਰ ਥੋਸ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਸਮ ਡਾਊਟ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਫਰਦਰ ਡਾਇਗਨੋਸਟਿਕ ਟੈਸਟ ਬਟ ਮੇਬੀ ਵੀ ਡੋਨਟ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਐਕਸਪੋਜ਼ ਥਮ ਟੂ ਦ ਰਿਸਕਸ ਆਫ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਸਟ੍ਰੇਟ ਟੂ ਦ ਗੋਲਡ ਸਟੈਂਡਰਡ ਇਨਵੇਸਿਵ ਐਂਜੀਓਗ੍ਰਾਮ ਸੋ देयर ਆਰ ਟੂ ਗਰੂਪਸ ਆਫ ਟੈਸਟਸ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਹੈਵ ਵਨ ਇਜ਼ ਕਾਲਡ anatomical testing so we mm-hmm. want to look at what the coronary arteries are like mm-hmm. in a patient who may have a low risk of angina so the test there would be a ct coronary angiogram mm-hmm. where a patient goes to a ct scanner and we, mm-hmm. again we will inject a dye mm-hmm. and that will tell us what the arteries of the heart look like mm-hmm. and it's a very accurate test and it tells us if there are any narrowings so the narrowing seen by the straight forward angiogram or ct angiogram what's the difference for the so, patient. Yeah, so there mm-hmm. are two different tests. Mm-hmm. So the invasive angiogram will actually insert dye within the arteries of the heart. Okay. So it's a much more accurate description of what the internal mm-hmm. lumen of the arteries are looking like. So the CT scan will tell us what the arteries are like from outside. outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um to see the so kisra matlab dono nu angiogram te CT angiogram de vich ਜਿਹੜਾ ਐਂਜੀਓਗ੍ਰਾਮ ਹੈਗਾ ਆਰਡਨਰੀ ਵਾਲਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਥੋੜੀ ਜੀ ਨਾਰੋਇੰਗ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਨੂੰ ਦੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਾਈਡਡ ਕਿ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਆਲਮੋਸਟ ਸ਼ੋਰ ਪਰ ਇਫ देयर ਵਾਸ ਅ ਡਾਊਟ ਔਰ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਸੋਰਟ ਆਫ ਥਿੰਕਿੰਗ ਕਿ ਲਾਈਕਲੀ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਐਂਜੀਓ ਮੇ ਨਾਟ ਬੀ ਦੈਨ ਦੇ ਡੂ ਸੀਟੀ ਸਕੈਨ ਸੀਟੀ ਐਂਜੀਓਗ੍ਰਾਮ ਐਂਡ ਵਿਦ ਦੈਟ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਰਾ ਯੂ ਸੀ ਦਾ ਹੋਲ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਬਲੱਡ ਵੈਸਲਸ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਰਟ ਐਂਡ ਗਿਵਸ ਆਪਣੇ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਨੂੰ ਐਕਿਊਰੇਟ ਪਿਕਚਰ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਆ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਪਲਾਨ ਕਰਨੀ ਹੈ ਅੱਗੇ ਟ੍ਰੀਟਮੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਸੀਟੀ ਇਸ ਇਸ ਬੇਸਿਕਲੀ ਲਾਈਕ ਅ ਫੋਰਮ ਆਫ ਐਕਸਰੇ ਬਟ ਯੂ ਗੋ ਥਰੂ ਅ ਬਿਗ ਡੋਨਟ ਐਮ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਗੋ ਇਨ ਯੂ ਕਮ ਆਊਟ ਐਂਡ ਇਟ ਜਸਟ ਟੇਕਸ ਪਿਕਚਰਸ ਆਫ ਯਰ ਹੋਲ ਬੋਡੀ ਐਮ ਰਾਦਰ ਥੈਨ ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਡਾਈ ਪਟ ਇਨ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਨ ਸਿਟਿੰਗ ਅੰਡਰ ਐਕਸਰੇ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਲਾਈਵ ਯੈਸ and Actually, the other i mean the other group of tests mm-hmm. are called functional tests mm-hmm. now in that situation what we will do is put the body under a degree of stress or strain as if you're exercising almost mm-hmm. um and then we see how the heart responds to that using mm-hmm. measurements which are functional mm-hmm. so there are three main tests here first of all an exercise tolerance test where mm-hmm. a patient will be wired up to an ecg machine mm-hmm. and then they will go into a treadmill mm-hmm. and exercise and as the strain of exercise emerges we can see what happens to the electrical signal of the heart. G. G. Yeah. And the second test would be called a stress echocardiogram which is an ultrasound scan of mm-hmm. the heart mm-hmm. and we look at how the heart muscle works under stress whether it's exercise or whether we give chemicals to make the heart work harder. Mm-hmm. And the third test is called a nuclear test of the heart where again under exercise or under chemical stress the heart works harder. and we see how much blood is being taken up by the heart muscle. Mm-hmm. So those mm-hmm. functional tests tell us whether the heart is actually working under stress or strain or not. Mm-hmm. How long does it take for these tests to happen? So the tests uh, they will vary patient by patient, but generally um a patient shouldn't expect to be in hospital for more than half the day in total. Mhm. And they're conscious? Yes, absolutely. So for the exercise test mm-hmm. it will take maybe 30 minutes mm-hmm. maximum. Mm-hmm. um for a nuclear perfusion scan sometimes it can be done in one sitting with just the stress imaging sometimes a patient will come back for another set of imaging as well mm-hmm. and so a esra ji ke jinna nu shak hai unna de test karde hain dekhan vaste jehdiyan arteries nu dekhan layi te unna ne angiogram kar liya doctor ne ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਹਦਾ ਫੰਕਸ਼ਨਲ ਟੈਸਟ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿ ਟ੍ਰੈਡਮਿਲ ਤੇ ਕਈ ਆ ਨੇ
ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਔਰ ਤੀਸਰਾ ਟੈਸਟ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਹ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਹੋਰ ਪਾਵਰਫੁਲ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿ ਨਿਊਕਲੀਅਰ ਟੈਸਟ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੈ ਗਿਆ ਪਰ ਮਰੀਜ਼ ਆਲ ਥਰੂ ਕੌਨਸ਼ੀਅਸ ਰਹਿੰਦਾ ਯੈਸ ਔਰ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਅੱਧਾ ਦਿਨ ਜਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਦਿਨ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਇਨ ਏਜ ਲਿਮਿਟ ਵਿਦ ਥੀਸ ਟੈਸਟਸ देयर इज नो एज लिमिट to these tests but of course we always look at the risks and benefits of doing any test in mm-hmm. medicine mm-hmm. Yeah, which yes. are informed to the patient and then of course okay, yes okay all that so uh, i won't take too much of your time investigation why they've been uh, discussed mm-hmm. before so tell us how would you handle treatment wise in this time and age yes. there's so many things available now so tell us mm-hmm. how step by step you you would take your patient through Yes so for the patient in the outpatient setting quite often the general practitioner will have started appropriate medication mm-hmm. but if i go through a patient who may have nothing provided for them and i think they've got angina i guess the first thing is to explain the condition to them and then to talk to them about the potential treatments so mm-hmm. for a patient who's getting chest pain on exertion mm-hmm. i will give them something called a gtn spray G- now mm-hmm. gtn is a chemical which dilates opens blood vessels so it opens up the arteries so that when a patient gets pain they can take a spray or a tablet under the tongue mm-hmm. and that acts within seconds to dilate the vessels and take the pain away mm-hmm. as well as the patient resting and quite often that uh, they and correct me if i'm wrong but if you are experiencing that pain and then if that's if your spray is not helping um then that's when you should probably think about calling the ambulance. Yes, absolutely. A patient should stop whatever they're doing and rest so it reduces demand on the heart. Take their spray. Yes, and if it doesn't work within 10 to 15 minutes, they should call an ambulance if the pain persists. And is that spray only used when you have pain? It's not something you need to take regularly. We don't take it regularly and on a daily basis, but sometimes patients do undertake activity where they they know they may be about to get chest pain so if they're going to climb a flight of stairs mm-hmm. or do something vigorous some patients do take it just before starting that exercise mm-hmm. but generally we would advise taking the spray one patient experience pain the pain yeah. Yeah. so ye jada spray professor saab sanu das rahe ne ye spray jada hai jado angina hoye ya matlab jis tarah heart pain tusi kehne hai us vele use karna aur ye particular spray tonu leaflet ta hunda box vich par fir vi doctor tonu explain karde hai ki zuban de thalle us spray karna hai ਔਰ ਉਹ 10 ਮਿੰਟਾਂ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਅੰਦਰ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਅਗਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਫਿਰ ਵੀ ਤਕਲੀਫ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਐਂਬੂਲੈਂਸ ਬੁਲਾਣੀ ਹੈ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਆਬਵੀਅਸਲੀ ਟਾਈਮ ਫੈਕਟਰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬੜਾ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈਗਾ ਡੈਫੀਨਿਟਲੀ ਯਾ 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 ਸੋ ਦੈਟ ਗੋਸ ਔਨ ਫॉर ਹਾਊ ਲੌਂਗ ਯੂ ਗੈਟ ਅ ਸਪਰੇ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਪੇਸ਼ੈਂਟ ਗੈਟਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਬਲੀ ਬੈਟਰ ਹੀ ਸਿਟਸ ਐਟ ਹੋਮ Hmm. and then how long would you leave him or call him back after so how long time back to hospital for emergencies or routine checks or yes i mean we, i mean i always advise if a patient is getting pain at rest so without exertion yeah they should go back to see their gp or if the pain uh-huh. is coming on and it's causing real problems at home they should come straight to hospital mm-hmm. right but I, oh, uh, sorry carry on i've heard that um when a patient is diagnosed with a heart problem that this, there's a certain number of drugs that they have to be started on yes what what's what, what what medicines are they and what's what's the implication of that yes so the patient who have has a batch of drugs um generally they're quite surprised that they have so many drugs in one go mm-hmm. but if i take you through them one by one perhaps uh, a patient will normally be given aspirin and aspirin is a tablet which will stop platelets coming together and causing mm-hmm. clots mm-hmm. and the reason we give aspirin is to reduce the risk of clots forming within the arteries of the heart so platelets sangati are like little fragments that are in your blood and jo the thodi ko injury hunda ya then they can often clot together and form a little plaster bleeding bad in, kar in, in, yeah. inside your body so Anji. that you can Anji. stop bleeding um and aspirin jo hai wo khunu thin kar de taki um jo the clots na ban swere si pehle show which uh, to see mention kita si ga ke uh, blood jada hai us zyada sticky ho janda hai for various factors like people jinna de high cholesterol hai ya uh, 
ਹੋਰ ਕੋਈ ਵਜ੍ਹਾ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਛੋਟੀਆਂ ਛੋਟੀਆਂ ਆਰਟਰੀਜ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਛੋਟੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਰਕੂਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਜਾਰੀ ਰਹੇ ਤਾਂ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਲਾ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਐਸਪਰਿਨ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਬਾਈ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਖੂਨ ਹੈ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਰਹੇ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਪਲੇਟਲੈਟਸ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਸਟਿਕ ਨਾ ਕਰਨ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਜੇ ਸਪੋਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਬਾਹਰ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਖੂਨ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਆਂਦੀਆਂ ਬਾਹਰ ਨਿਕਲਦਾ ਹੈ ਪਲੇਟਸ ਲੈਣ ਨਾਲ ਉਹ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਉਸੇ ਪਲਾਸਟਰ ਬਣ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਖੂਨ ਇੰਜਰੀ ਬੰਦ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਦੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਵਨ ਥਿੰਗ ਵਾਟ ਐਲਸ so a second in group of tablets box. yeah in the box the second group of tablets would be called statins so we've heard of statins yes. now we give those to all patients in whom we suspect heart disease or with proven heart disease now the big myth is that statins are not only given for patients who have high cholesterol we also give them to any patient who has established heart disease or a suspicion of heart disease and even in diabetes as well even in diabetes because statins not only lower cholesterol levels they also stabilize the cholesterol that lies within the arteries of the heart mm. so they make the narrowings the plaques in the arteries they make them stable and less likely to rupture mm -hmm. and therefore less likely to proceed to heart attacks mm -hmm. so statins will be given whether your cholesterol is high or not mm -hmm. uh, that is after uh, they have come to you and you've given them treatment so that's the second yeah. group that's of medicines group, yeah. and the dose is slightly different because if we were in primary prevention we were mm. giving about say for example 20 mg of atovastatin mm. but your dose will be much higher yes mm. yes yeah, so for secondary, secondary prevention the dose yes. will be higher yes. for established disease but yes. primary prevention we will give the same doses the and gp would get are there mm. any do you find that some patients are reluctant to take statins uh many patients quite rightly ask what their cholesterol is and we will tell them but they get quite surprised sometimes when you say you must take a statin even if the cholesterol is normal right so, so we have to explain that it doesn't matter what your cholesterol level is yeah. sometimes you will be given a statin for the additional benefits that those drugs cause the stabilization yes so jitna thodi nari hai gaya wo will be blocked hai na gand de naal and as you know that ke oh gand spreads to the rest of your body ਫਿਰ ਜੇ ਜੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਟੈਟਨਸ ਲੈਣੀ ਹੈ ਫਿਰ ਜੋ ਉਹ ਗੰਦੇ ਆ ਨਾਰੀਅਤ ਵਿੱਚ ਦੇ ਵਿਲ ਸਟੇਬਲਾਈਜ਼ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਵਿਲ ਫੋਰਮ ਅ ਕਲੋਟਸ ਵਿਚ ਕੈਨ ਫਲਾਈ ਆਫ ਟੂ ਐਨੀ ਪਾਰਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਬ੍ਰੇਨ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਸੋ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਅਥਰੋਮਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਲਾਈਡ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਦੇਖੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਇੱਕ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਵੱਡਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਸੋ ਐਂਡ ਸੈਕੰਡਲੀ ਉਹ ਟੁੱਟਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉਹ ਛੋਟੇ ਛੋਟੇ ਪਲਾਕਸ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਐਮਬਲਾਈ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਉਹ ਅਗਾਂਹ ਸਰਕੂਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਕਿਧਰੇ ਵੀ ਜਾ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਅੱਖਾਂ ਜਾ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਬ੍ਰੇਨ ਹੀ ਜਾ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਕਾਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਸਟਰੋਕ ਐਂਡ ਆਲ ਸੋ ਇਟਸ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਲਾਕ ਫਾਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਬਲੱਡ ਵੈਸਲਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾਂ ਹਾਰਟ ਤੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਏਰੀਆ ਤੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਸਟੇਬਲਾਈਜ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਏ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਲਈ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕੋਲੈਸਟ੍ਰੋਲ ਦੀ ਅੰਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਡਬਲ ਜੌਬ ਹੈ ਇੱਕ ਤਾਂ ਕੋਲੈਸਟ੍ਰੋਲ ਨੂੰ ਕੀਤਾ ਅਗਰ ਕੋਲੈਸਟ੍ਰੋਲ ਲੋਅਰ ਵੀ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਤਾਂ ਵੀ ਕੰਟੀਨਿਊ ਕਰਨੀਆ ਟੂ ਸਟੇਬਲਾਈਜ਼ਡ ਨੂੰ ਕਿ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉੱਤੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਪਲਾਕ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਕਹੋਗੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਚ ਗੰਦ ਗੰਦ ਉਹ ਐਨੀ ਅਦਰ ਨੇਮ ਯੂ ਵੁੱਡ ਸੁਜੈਸਟ ਪਲਾਕ ਦਾ ਪਲਾਕ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਸਮ ਪੀਪਲ ਕਾਲ ਇਟ ਹਾਰਡਨਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਆਰਟਰੀਸ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਫਰਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਦੀ ਆਰਟਰੀਸ ਫਰਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਆਰਟਰੀਸ ਉਹ ਮਤਲਬ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆ ਸਟੇਬਲ ਹੋ ਜਾਏ ਵੀ ਅੱਗੇ ਵਧੇ ਨਾ ਔਰ ਟੁੱਟੇ ਨਾ ਸੋ ਈਵਨ ਇਫ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਕੋਲੈਸਟ੍ਰੋਲ ਬਾਰਡਰ ਲਾਈਨ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਠੀਕ ਹੈਗਾ ਅਗਰ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਬੇ ਹਾਰਟ ਅਟੈਕ ਤੇ ਜਾਂ ਐਂਜਾਈਨਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਗੋਲੀਆਂ ਲੈਣੀਆਂ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਟਾਟਿਨਸ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਡੈਫੀਨਿਟਲੀ ਵਾਟਸ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਮੈਡੀਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਟੇਕ ਸੋ ਦੇ ਅਦਰ ਕਲਾਸ ਆਫ ਡਰਗਸ ਵੀ ਆਫਨ ਯੂਜ਼ ਆਰ ਕਾਲਡ ਐਸ ਇਨਹਿਬਿਟਰਸ ਯੈਸ ਸੋ ਐਂਜੀਓਟੈਂਸਿਨ ਕਨਵਰਟਿੰਗ ਐਂਜ਼ਾਈਮ ਇਨਹਿਬਿਟਰਸ ਨਾਉ ਥੇਰ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਐਵੀਡੈਂਸ ਰਾਮੇਪ੍ਰਿਲ ਲਾਇਸਿਨਪ੍ਰਿਲ ਪਰ
heart places and the body places on its blood supply. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's important that we have to say that we have to say that we have to say that we have to prevent things from getting worse, right? so to prevent the strokes, to pre prevent um, your vulgan in your arteries from rutting. And then you then you have the other drugs that actually help treat the disease. And Sade Dil is under a lot of stress and we need to somehow reduce the work on the heart. So taking these medications, Idavaya Khan Dinal, Jo Sadi Stressia Dil Deopur, O Kato Jandia. So Sangiji, it's very important that you do take these medicines if you are prescribed them by the doctor, because in the long term they will help you. But I do understand that it is a bag full of medication. But and um, often there are a lot of side effects as well, um, especially with things like the calcium channel blockers. Yes, I yeah. mean, there, there are some side effects. And again, mm -hmm. it's, there's a common myth that there are lots of side effects with medication. And quite often Doctor, there are. Uh, things are uh, a lot easier for the last few years. Uh, the pharmacists help and guide. There are many boxes. Uh, some people, uh, you would think the compliance is not good. That has uh, improved mm. a lot. Families understand and uh, there's a lot of education around it. It's a question of willingness and be prepared to swallow that many medicines time-wise. But it has yes. been made easier in nursing homes like at, even mm. at home. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes you think, oh, say for Asians need vitamin D. Mm. and. Uh, you need to either take it daily or monthly. I mean, it's it's such a okay benign medicine compared to many others, mm -hmm. but yet sometimes you forget, yeah. isn't it? So they should not blame themselves. Yeah. If they forget the medicine, they can either consult the GP or they can uh, ask the pharmacy. But don't blame yourself, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and get disheartened. Yes. Uh, a positive thinking and a positive living and uh, you know educational leaflets mm. um, the uh, medicines boxes have they all the leaflets by law now and uh, they can read the side effects come and discuss with us like gps i'll save you time yeah. but um, uh, the important thing is to take those medicines mm -hmm. and other conditions like uh, you would say <coughs> diabetes and all be careful you know the normal advice which we're going to follow up uh, or breathe anyway uh, what else would you like our patients yeah. to do yeah i think you know you're absolutely right nobody's infallible and people will sometimes miss doses or when they're traveling the time zone change which means sometimes yes. there's a change in doses yes. but i think as you say be positive take your tablets mm -hmm. and one thing i've noticed over the last 20 years certainly in my career that Asian patients now have less stigma associated with taking medication. That's wonderful. People are now mm. much more mm. open in their communities to mm. say, yes, I'm on these tablets and I'll take my tablets when mm. I'm at the mandir or mm. the gurdwara or the mm. masjid. Mm. Whereas maybe 20 years ago, people were quite embarrassed about having to take medication. Okay. So I think a really positive step that our communities have made is to dispel the stigma associated with diseases because so they are so common. Talking about mandirs and gurdwaras and uh, mm. uh, masjids and all, um, have you noticed any, uh, say for example, you go to your mandir and mm. probably we go with our friends and all that, have you noticed any changes in uh, dietary things like we have langar and they mm. also, mandir they do langar as well, um, has, should we focus and target them? to do few changes to help the community. Um, my, yeah. my point in saying is, I like your views on it, that uh, have you noticed anything? So I think it varies depending mm. upon which organization we go to around the country. Mm. I think there are some mandirs and gurdwaras and masjids which are excellent and they're leading by example. Mm. So they're serving their communities, not only by improving their mental health, by being a place of worship or a community center, but the diet in those centers yeah. has improved dramatically. So some institutions have actually, they've yeah. stopped people bringing in sweetmeats, oh, for example. Wow. Right. And they've said, if you want to bring food, bring fruit, yeah. which is a really positive message. It is. Now, I think, unfortunately, there are still some of our organizations which 
adopt a policy that, well, people should be allowed to bring whatever they wish and we should embrace that. And I can absolutely understand that. Their choice. But I put it to you, and my opinion is very strong here, that if we want to serve our communities, we have to look after their physical well-being. Yes. So I would like to see a day where actually all of our community centres don't have unhealthy food. Mm. I think I would not like to see sweetmeats bought in there, or very, very rarely, exceptionally, should they be bought. But well, we need to see more yeah. fruit, mm -hmm. vegetable, mm -hmm. and healthy cooking. Yeah, you it's very, it's it's very it's common to see, uh, even in the Gurdwaras, for example, you know, it's a Sunday, all the samosas are there, all the pakoras, yeah. all the jalebis, and people like it. And yeah. I think it's very important for us to, to educate people that, yes, so sometimes I want a treat is okay, but you go every week to, to the Gudwara, or, mm -hmm. you, or you'll go every week to the Mandar, and you will be eating that every week, basically. Yeah. And that's probably a little bit more than yeah. we should do. But I think we need to lead by example. Yes, so definitely. anything in moderation is fine. But yeah. I think when it becomes the norm, I think that's when we need to start leading and changing yeah. things. Doctor, you are chair of the South Asian Health Foundation. And uh, earlier on, you told us that you're doing a lot of work with these institutions. Mm. And uh, how do you do it? You, do you take people there? It's, is it by lecturing or is it by actually mm. doing some checks there? Uh, what sort of uh, information are you passing yes, and Yes, well, I mean, it's been a real pleasure for the last 20 years to chair the South Asian Health Foundation. Mm. And we very much want to help communities in their own setting. So we will go into gurdwaras and mandirs and masjids and we will empower communities. So we will go in and give lectures on diabetes, right. cardiovascular disease and mm. more recently we are having chai and chat events about mental health and mm -hmm. suicide. Mm -hmm. And the healthcare professionals who form part of our charity want to go back into their communities and give something back. And there's mm -hmm. nothing better than being able to go into the community setting and to speak bilingually and really be open and honest about these conditions and educate and empower our mm -hmm. communities. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of education for communities, but also, likewise, we also educate our healthcare professionals Yes. So every year we hold several conferences where yes. professionals can come along to get yes. high quality education, That's which right. you don't get in the mainstream of mm. cardiovascular like or recently education. Like recently you've done Ramadan and uh, diabetes, yes. that was your Yes, so two days one. ago we had a conference in London attended by almost 200 people where wow. we educated mm. healthcare practitioners about how to manage diabetes during Ramadan and in fact we had an Imam who attended who mm -hmm. actually dispelled a lot of myths about which mm -hmm. people could and could not fast mm -hmm. during Ramadan. So mm -hmm. we like to tailor mm -hmm. advice which is mainstream for our communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very important as well because I feel that, especially with the older age group, they might get the support from those community centres. Mm -hmm. So if the community centres are able to kind of look after everybody, like you said, yeah. um, then that can really help us go one step forward. Um, in mm. reducing the burden of, cardi of cardiovascular disease. Mm. I mean, absolutely. I mean, my mother is more likely to believe the peers that she sits with at the community centre in the Monday than she is to listen to me oh, about heart 100%. disease. So the there you go. <laughs> the amount of times <laughs> you might. Of course. Mummy ki baad aapko sunni hai. Not the other way around. That's right. Mm. Or they'll listen to the latest thing on YouTube and they'll. Yeah, or they'll watch it. TV and they'll learn something. Yeah. Yeah, um, one more question I have, then yes. I won't trouble you too much, unless <laughs> you have. Yeah. Um, you know, the way I look at these institutions is that there is community there uh, of various um, under level of understanding. Hmm. There could be professionals there, there could be people who are um, not so informed, and there's also I find that there are beliefs in these institutions, mm. health beliefs, which are deeply <coughs> rooted and find it difficult to dislodge. And uh, the communities, again, they have different levels of beliefs or different beliefs that some sort of would just leave it alone and some would really stick by it. So I think that there is community there with different levels of understanding and, and plus there are carers of these institutions 
like you would have pandits and we've got our uh, in gurdwaras by mm -hmm. and all um have you had separate contact with the carers or they are all in one go community because sometimes the carers believes if they don't agree with you um it will just carry on the same thing yes so my belief is that we have to educate everybody mm -hmm. so entire families because families will often be carers mm. so we have to educate everybody mm -hmm. to the same standard mm -hmm. and I think we have to openly tackle some of the myths that are out yeah, there yeah. what myths are there? so one of the myths I can give you an example of that I heard last week was uh, uh, an individual who in a community said well if you go to India on holiday you can suddenly stop taking your diabetes medication mm. because the weather is so nice and hot and actually that's a myth mm -hmm. but again if the sort of wisdom is spread across our communities then you can imagine the damage it will do mm -hmm. to our patients mm -hmm. so sometimes you have to ask about what beliefs are mm -hmm. you know what people are thinking about what are you concerned about and give them an educated answer I think often as well I've one myth that I always hear in the tone from the good is that oh, don't worry it's God's like it's God's blessed this food mm. um, so it won't cause you any harm and yes I agree that God has blessed this food, but I would disagree with the fact that if you have a lots of butter roti every single day, lots of butter chapatis, very heavy foods every single day, then that will cause you harm, even mm. if it is from a temple. Yeah, I mean, listen, God, God is here to look after us, but we also have to look we after, after ourselves, ourselves as, well. as well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to ask, um, when a patient uh, does come in acutely with a heart attack, mm. um, what happens then? So it, when a patient comes in, usually through an ambulance call, or through yes. a 999 call, and they're having a heart attack, we want to treat that heart attack as quickly as possible. We have a phrase that time is muscle. Mm -hmm. So the more one delays to getting definitive treatment mm -hmm. and opening the artery that's blocked, the more muscle will be damaged. Mm -hmm. So. We make the diagnosis very quickly. Sometimes it's actually being yeah. made in the, the ambulance on the way in or in the GP surgery. And the patient will usually go straight to a cardiac cath lab, which is like an operating theater, where we will do the angiogram mm -hmm. and put some dye down the arteries to find where the blockage is. And usually it is a procedure called an angioplasty. What's where, that? So an angioplasty is where we see where the blockage is. Mm -hmm. And because the artery is narrowed, we will then put a balloon across that narrowing and inflate the balloon to then squeeze that open, so to open the artery up. And in order to hold it open, quite often a stent is put into the artery, yeah. which is like a, a scaffold yes. to keep the artery open. I see, let, I let see. Let me explain that. Uh, Saat Sangha Ji, uh, Harpreet has asked that when you have 999 call, you have to go to the hospital, you have to go to the hospital, so hospital the doctor ambulance through the journey or ovi tyar secondary care wale oh straight away unna nu le jande ne jithe ke emergency uh, angiography mm. hundi hai aur de naal de naal hi je unna nu balki milda hai ke oh dekhde hai itthe ke arteries kehdi kehdi jagah te narrow ho jandi hai utthe onu kholan di koshish karde hai kholde is tarah hai ke onu na balloon pa ke stretch karde hai artery nu te fir agar jadon khul jandi hai jaiz hai ke oh fir band ho jayegi so us te andar ek hollow tube pande hai jithe through fir blood chala janda hai so, oh, Nikki Jenny Jedi Hundi, a piece, did a hollow Hunda, did a Namarasta Banaya, Hun Janli, Unu stent can there. The O stent did I, oh, up no risk factor there again depend Kada, be kinna chiru, oh, come Karega. So, agar uh, it could be a warning sign ke, that uh, you've got a bad uh, sort of angina, you've got a stent, mm. so I better stop smoking. Mm. Yeah. Better change my diet, better go for a walk. Better and take my tablets. Better take yes, my medicine. Absolutely. So those stents can last you a long time. 
Uh, what is the longest time life for a stent, as long as possible? You don't well, know. It. We don't know yet because they haven't been in for 50, 60 years yet, mm, I guess. I um, but they will usually outlive the individual. So yeah. they're quite durable mm -hmm. stents. But so we must take the tablets. News, yeah. Which is a good news. Yeah. But agar tusi usnu hun ignore kar dio, be stent pa palia, te fer uh, thik hai, apna baaki diyan chiza move nahi hoya. Yeah, having a stent is not the be all and end all. You still got to do the secondary you must take yeah. must take the medication that's there. And yeah, yeah. quite often in patients who have had a, a heart attack, the heart some of the heart muscle will have died. Mm -hmm. Now, quite commonly, we will therefore do an ultrasound scan called an echocardiogram mm -hmm. of the heart about six weeks after the mm -hmm. heart attack, just to assess the degree of damage to the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the heart has been severely damaged, um, quite often we will offer patients the choice of having something called a defibrillator. Mm -hmm. So in that case, the patient will have a very specialized pacemaker put in just onto the left side of the chest usually, and a wire inside the heart, so that if a patient has a cardiac arrest, that will automatically detect it and bring people back to life. Mm -hmm. Now that's like having an internal version of the defibrillators that we can see in railway stations and in some of our mandirs and gurdwaras and mosques where yeah. there are defibrillators. We were talking about uh, defibrillators earlier on. We yeah. see that uh, loads been done in shopping areas mm. and GP surgeries, yeah. uh, dentists, dentists also do it. Yes. And uh, uh, we need to encourage that sort of a thing in institutions like this. Mm. Not only that, um, Probably we should go and find out, in, and you would also do it. You're already mm. doing, visiting a lot of uh, religious institutions. Mm. So we will be on the lookout as well, that where is the defibrillator here? Yeah. Mm. And uh, not only that, We're getting training what I want to, well. what the important message I want to give is that it's not a scary machine. Yes. Anybody can learn to use it. Mm -hmm and the instructions are inside it is automatic if, even if you've never used it and you feel somebody's fallen now i should mm. you know at least try make an attempt yes. the worst is attempt will fail but if you don't try that'll fail anyway yes so we need to have uh, this message across that if we can have cpr trained people uh, in the institutions at one particular time mm. duty wise uh, or sometimes they are not available they are doing part and uh, you know mm. they're not available then the community should learn a bit more mm. so uh, that is one of our future um, what do you call items in the bucket big mm. bucket of future that we plan to uh, reinforce through the television media and uh, mm. personally as well yeah. going through yeah. different things I mean so nowadays mm. there's a lot of media coverage on doing CPR mm. I think they have like C um, they've had days where they dedicated it to yes um, mm. to doing that so this is when you um, you do chest compressions you give rescue breaths yeah um, and the defibrillator yes it's seen on TV programs like ER and things it's not as dramatic as you see um, but it can save someone's mm. life mm. so and there are training courses available out there and it's very important I think if you are a part of the community th to try and get some knowledge in it because you could potentially save someone's life one day I mean I would say that there are three things and people don't need to think about being trained to save somebody's life the three important things in the chain of survival are first of all recognizing mm. that somebody is having a cardiac arrest so if somebody suddenly collapses or is unconscious, mm -hmm. always think that they could be having a cardiac arrest. To recognize that, to be able to feel a pulse, mm -hmm. and to be able to just speak to them and see if they're responding or not is really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second thing is basic life support. So as you say, CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. That is something everybody should be taught to do. And I'm really pleased to say that we're now starting to teach that in schools. I was mm. just thinking so that, yes. You know, everybody mm -hmm. at any age mm -hmm. should be able to practice CPR. Mm -hmm. The reason being that every second counts mm -hmm. when people collapse and have a cardiac arrest. And we know that the earlier we can provide CPR, the more likely somebody is to survive. Mm -hmm. The third thing is defibrillation. Now, many of us will never ever have to use a defibrillator, but it's important 
to know that if we did need one, where would we get it from and what would we do? Yes. Now, one thing I would like to say to everybody is you don't need to know how to use these defibrillators initially because they are so easy to use. Mm -hmm. If you open the box and take one off the wall, they will often have pictures which are very simple, mm -hmm. which tell you where to apply the pads that are in there and then which button to press and the machine will do the rest. Talk to you. The machine talks to you. It so talks you just to you do and it does everything. It's a very yeah. And some of the machines will actually tell you how to do CPR. Mm. So they'll mm. tell you what to do and whether mm. it's effective. Mm. Mm. So don't worry about being trained in using a defibrillator, but just know where to go if you ever need it. And in fact, you know, our charity, the South Asian Health Foundation and Dr. Amal Lad, who you're going to speak mm. to, is actually preparing a video called Bangraman and he's trying to teach people how to do CPR in a very humorous way. So I think it's Fantastic. great that people oh, can we'll be trained and you can ask him about that. We'll look yeah. forward um, to talking to him. Now. Definitely. Yes. Um, after, yes. after people have heart attacks, you said that um, quite often part of their heart muscle can die. Mm. Um, what role has exercise got to do after, um, after a heart attack? Mm. Mm. So exercise forms part of a cardiac rehabilitation program, which all patients will be invited to after a heart attack. Now, exercise is good for you, whether you've had a heart attack or not. Exercise yes. is good for you. Yes. And even more important after you've had a heart attack, to get the muscles growing, to keep your muscle mass, and to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. um, so exercise is an absolute must. And in the cardiac rehab program, we will often do that in a graded manner. So does it help bring back that muscle? It doesn't bring the muscle back, but actually it improves the overall Cardio respiratory fitness mm. and circulation. Mm. Right. And some it's people are often worried about exercising mm. after a heart mm. attack. Mm. So, again, the cardiac rehabilitation program mm. will talk mm. to them about what they mm. can do and what they can't do and what they should do. Mm -hmm. So, psychologically, it's very beneficial as well. And we know that it actually improves outcomes. Mm. We talked about um, heart failure in, our, in, the, in the first show, Dr. Gill. Um, and I was just wondering, I mean, it's quite a scary thing to say someone has got heart failure. Mm. Are there treatments available? Is it a terminal yeah. condition? No, there are many, many treatments for heart failure and heart failure is a syndrome. It's not a diagnosis. So the first question to ask when a patient has a heart failure syndrome is what's causing it? Mm -hmm. So is there a cause that can be reversible and can cure the patient? Because there are some causes of heart failure which can be cured. Such as? So, you know, thyroid disease. Mm -hmm. Hypertension. Another reason, hypertension. Mm -hmm. yeah valve disorders of yeah. the heart. Yeah. There are many, many causes of heart mm. failure, which is a long list, not necessarily just narrowing of the coronary arteries. Mm. So I again, see. one of the big myths with heart failure is that it's a terminal condition. It mm. isn't. There are some causes of heart failure which one can cure. Mm. Now, the second question I ask is why has this patient got heart failure at this stage? So mm -hmm. sometimes there are precipitating causes. So a patient may have gone into an abnormal heart rhythm. Mm. So atrial fibrillation is a good example. Mm. So they then develop a heart failure syndrome because they have an abnormal heart rhythm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there are other causes as to why patients can go into heart failure. Mm -hmm. and then the third reason is really, well, third area is what can we do with that patient now? So there are many evidence-based treatments for heart mm -hmm. failure in terms of medication. There are some operations that can help mm -hmm. some patients. Mm -hmm. um, and in other patients, there are pacemakers. So there are very specialized pacemakers now which can help the heart to beat more effectively. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there are many treatments available for heart failure and it's by no mean a, means a terminal condition. So Saad Sangha ji, Swala siya puchha si ga ke heart failure jada hai, o agar thonu kisa ne diagnose kita hai, to o da matlab e nahi hai ke bhi tusi hun tadi zindagi khatam ho gai hai ya hun tusi mar jana hai, hun e kar liye, o kar liye. There are treatments hai gya ne? or achhi tarah jehdiyan ke naviyan naviyan treatments vi hai gaya ne dawaiyan operation pacemakers te eh zaruri nahi hai ke apne aap nu tusi jinnu kehnde ne low feel karo ya negative feel karo pehla te oh prevent ho jayega agar tusi regularly apna hospital appointment attend kare gp appointment attend kare sara jehdiyan assi gallan dassiyan tonu risk factors unna te dhyan de rahe ha तो वो हार्ट फेलियर जड़ा है वो ट्रीट हो जाएगा पर कई चीज़ें ऐसी हैं ने जिन्हें नहीं ट्रीट हो सकती हैं वो भी विच होनी हैं ने पर वो थोड़ा ना जड़े अपने कंसल्टेंट हैं कि ने हॉस्पिटल वाले वो थोड़ा ना पूरी जानकारी 
ਦੇਣਗੇ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਕੀ ਸਟੇਜ ਹੈ ਕਿਸ ਸਟੈਪ ਤੇ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਦਵਾਈ ਲੈਣੀ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਆਪਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਹੋਣਾ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਪੇਸਮੇਕਰ ਪਹਿਨਣਾ ਹੈ ਐਂਡ ਲਾਈਫ ਇਜ਼ ਪੋਜ਼ਿਟਿਵ ਐਂਡ ਵੰਡਰਫੁਲ one of the areas is when people are fasting mm-hmm. so in our communities mm-hmm. be they hindu communities punjabi mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. muslim communities some people think well actually if i'm fasting should i take my tablets mm-hmm. that's quite a common question mm-hmm. and my advice is that actually fasting is there to make you feel better to give you discipline but not to make you unwell mm-hmm. and i see no reason why patients mm-hmm. should not take their medicines when they're fasting which includes insulin Mm-hmm. injections as well mm-hmm. and a lot of our religious mm-hmm. scholars would agree with that stance mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. there is a variety of advice out there mm-hmm. and after people have well if someone does have a heart problem be it heart failure or be it um, a heart attack then do you find that afterwards they might need other support other forms of support like psychological support or even financial support Yes, yeah, so I think uh, both of those areas are valid. So psychological support is important. Mm-hmm. And during the cardiac rehabilitation program, patients will often be assessed for that and mm-hmm. receive mm-hmm. psychology mm-hmm. support. Mm-hmm. Financial support, again, likewise. So people who have a heart attack will often not work for a period of time. Yeah. For some patients, actually, it may mean losing the breadwinner mm-hmm. in the family. So again part of the cardiac rehabilitation program will start to assess that and sensitively direct people to the right mm-hmm. sources so they can get advice about benefits and mm-hmm. other areas of concern mm-hmm. that they might address financially but patients shouldn't fear asking about it it's absolutely mm-hmm. normal to go through these things and you should ask mm-hmm. so we're here not to look after just your health care but also the social care aspect of your condition as well mm-hmm. yeah we find now that even though we are hard pressed for money nhs and all i think our medical services and social services are doing an excellent mm. job we can always improve i'm not yeah. saying that but uh, being a long term gp i can see that mm. uh, they are jointly now working mm. uh, wherever possible and they're working hard both the services and they talk to each other mm-hmm. they were means and messages to uh, communicate uh, p- putting patient in a center the it is difficult to um, give the guarantee to the patient what will be the outcome but at least if we are with them giving them support for uh, mm-hmm. depression and you know the stress mm-hmm. i mean going through all this upheaval of various investigations and all that yeah. is bound to give them bit down days yeah. so if we can help them that way yeah. um, so what i see and i want to know your experience now all the patients for heart attack or heart failure or anything to do with that do they have before discharge a, a proper assessment or some sort of guidance between the discharge from the hospital and because the rehabilitation appointment mm. can be a bit later on So yes. there's something called step down service and yeah so there are services and... there now mm. I think if I were being honest it not systematic oh, now right. we we do work very well together as you say I think yeah. between primary yeah. care and secondary care yeah. the partnerships are very good so over the course of my 20 years mm. in practicing cardiology I've certainly found the relationships are much better mm. communication is much mm. better Mm-hmm. and so with social services yes and social they are, services uh, quite too, so happy to help yes so yes i agree with you absolutely you know mm-hmm. everything isn't perfect but i think mm-hmm. we are doing a pretty good job under a lot of pressure at times and mm-hmm. you know people will go to see their gp quite soon after discharge yeah you know, which is a good thing so once you have you are happy that uh, we've dealt with this patient's acute needs or investigations for a chronic problem given them the diagnosis given them the treatment moral social support and all the signposting here there everywhere cardiac rehabilitation is very very important mm. 
and uh, medication is very important. Yeah. Where do you see the end of story? As far as you're concerned, do you follow them up after a year or whatever? <coughs> or what do you expect from the GPs? So I think because of the pressure of services mm. in hospitals, mm. quite often a patient will have their acute episode treated, then they'll be seen once afterwards mm. by a doctor. Um, and if everything is fine, we will discharge the patient mm. back to the care of the GP quite mm. appropriately at that mm. stage. Mm. And one thing I would say is that care never stops. And care isn't just about the 10-minute mm. appointment yes. a patient will yes. have with their consultant or GP. Mm. But we have to empower patients to care for themselves. So the yeah. advice about good diet, exercise, mm. better cooking, mm. all these things about lifestyle and compliance with medication, mm are things that patients should think about every day. Yeah, because mm. you have the power to look after your health. Absolutely. Well, that uh, removes the dependency. I mean, we want mm. patients to be independently thinking yeah. as well and uh, marching on with their life mm. rather than getting dependent on, you know, as minimal dependency, maybe the medication, the kids are reminding you or the mediboxes and all that. Mm. But the whole process should be from our primary care point of view mm. that as independent they can be, we should encourage that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, Auntie think, G, Dadi G, you can try to take your own advice, try to try to do your exercise bhi karlo, mm. and you can look after yourself, right? You, yeah. you, can, you can live yeah. a long age. Having a heart attack is not the be all and end mm. all. And one thing I'd just like to mention is that quite often after a heart attack, um, or, or if someone does have a problem with the heart, then they might be feeling of, no, 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 you don't stress, don't stress too much because your heart is weak, or you can't do this because you've got a, a weak heart. I mean, is that mm. true? No, it's not true. I think we have to be it's positive only in the films. for patients. It's only in the <laughs> Hindi films. Yeah, <laughs> only in the films. But I think, mm. you know, I, I would say patients mustn't feel alone. Mm -hmm. So they have mm. all their carers around them mm. at home. So looking after that patient is a team game. And I think, you know, cardiac rehabilitation and all the advice given is not just for the patient, but it's for the family as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the example I give you is diet and cooking. Mm -hmm. So actually we know that patients will be one member of a family usually. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if they need to change their diet, quite often it means that either the family will have to cook two different meals or everybody has to change their meal and diet. So actually one of the positive things about cardiac rehabilitation is when a patient starts talking to their family and imparting the same advice because that's primary prevention Definitely. for the entire family because Definitely. we know people who live under the same roof will use this, usually eat the same diet. If one person smokes in the household, then actually every other member of the family gets exposed to passive yes. smoking. Yes. Yeah, they definitely. will often travel mm. together so they're exercise regimes will often be very similar. Mm -hmm. So actually rehabilitation, I think certainly in Asian communities is about rehabilitation for the family. Mm, yeah. I see. So it's I even see. more important for our families who tend to live together and act as carers. I see. And in the future, we will actually be doing a show about cardiac rehabilitation mm -hmm. um, and also looking CPRs at the exercises. and defibrillators and exercises. Yes, and yes. And uh, we will also be looking um, in, our, in our third series, in our third show, we will actually be looking at um, prevention as well. So how can we prevent ourselves from getting these conditions in the first place? Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. Uh, thank Dr. you very Dr. much, Dr. Professor. Yeah. It's been lovely picking your brains and getting yeah. expert opinions. And it's been a real pleasure. <laughs> yeah, it's been a real yeah. pleasure and, to be um, here. I'm really glad that uh, you're, support, uh, you're leading uh, such a, an eminent charity such as the South, Asi mm. South Asian Foundation. Mm. Um, and I wish you all the best. And thank you so much for coming on the show and, and for educating us and educating us, us. as well. Yeah, it's a real pleasure. Us the us pleasure to well. educate everybody else. So yes, it's been lovely to work with you. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So, why do you keep that? Why do you keep that?